Have you ever tried to make a reference sheet for your characters, but then you had no idea how to actually do it? Reference sheets are drawings that have the main objective of making drawing a specific character a lot easier. They are used in games, animation, comics, VTuber models, and many other places. Pretty much because they are very very useful, but they can also be quite difficult to make. Especially if you had never made one before, but that's why I'm here today. I'll take you through my full process from start to finish to create a reference sheet, including some tips and tricks and some stuff I learned over the years. So let's get started! Okay, so before I even open a file in Clip Studio Paint, the first step I take is to think about where and how will the reference sheet be used. If you're going to use it for a comic as an example, then you'll probably need a lot of expressions, some angles, and maybe some poses that show your character's personality. But now, if you're doing a 3D model, you might need some more standard poses and clothing breakdowns. Think about why you are doing the character sheet and how you or your client will use it. This will prevent you a lot of headaches and those really awkward moments when you are almost done with the drawing and then you realize something is missing. And now you not only have to create that extra thing, but you also have to find space for it. And maybe even have to change the whole layout. So yeah, planning things like this help you. The reference sheet I'm working on today is a commission for Anger Azalea, a very friendly shape-shifting dragon who travels through dimensions and has some pretty crazy adventures. This little tiefling is the persona she uses to explore Faerun, which you might be familiar if you play Dungeons and Dragons. Okay, with all of that in mind, my next step is to write down everything I'll do in the reference sheet. Who is the character, what are the angles, the poses, what details or prop I want to highlight, what facial expressions I want to include, and anything that might be easy to forget. If you're doing this reference sheet for someone else, make sure to check with them if there is anything they would like to include too. Things like a cute little detail that's often hidden by their clothes, or maybe a pattern or a specific design, or a tattoo, or anything like that. Write it in a place that's easy for you to find. I like to use my project tracker on Notion, which is completely free, link on description, but you can use anything that works for you. And now that we have everything written down, the next step is to start gathering references. I swear we are going to draw on this video. I take all of the existing art of the character, some anatomy references, some color palettes, patterns, and everything I think I'll need for the drawing. I also always like to save some professional reference sheets to use as layouts and presentation reference. And to keep everything really neat and organized, I like to use PRF, but again, you can use whatever tool works for you. Okay, with all of that wrapping work done, it is finally time to start sketching. This might sound a bit like too much prep work before, you know, drawing, but trust me, those things, they are really useful and they will save you a lot of time and stress because those type of illustrations, you need to have a lot of elements and they need to make sense together and reference sheets are made for you to use them as reference, so they need to be very organized and you know, need to know what you are doing. I always like to start with the main drawing, which will be the biggest and most detailed one. For the pose, I highly recommend you have at least one drawing with a pretty neutral pose, just because those are way easier to use as reference. The character can be facing straight forward or at an angle. I usually like to do a 3 quarters angle, just because I think it's a bit easier to show how certain shapes work. The ideal would be to have multiple angles, especially if you're like doing a comic or anything that you're gonna draw the same character a lot of times and in very different angles. But since I mostly work with VTuber models, having just the front of the character is usually more than enough. Also, if I'm working on a commission, if I have to draw more than one angle for the character, the commission and the art will get a bit more expensive. So that's something else to keep in mind. I always recommend you test things out and find out what works best for you. I like to start with a very loose drawing of the character, then I like to sketch the other elements and play a bit with the layout. 
Okay, now with the main sketch done, I start working on refining the other elements. In this case, I started with the facial expressions. Drawing the same character with different expressions can be quite hard. But one thing that has helped me the most is to do those very simplified heads with similar proportions of the character and then using them as a base for the expressions. I try to keep everything very simplified and exaggerated and I also almost always keep those drawings without any shading because I find it easier to use them as reference later if they, you know, are very simple and just have maybe the base colors and things like that. I won't talk a lot about facial expressions today because I think I have a lot to learn yet and I also think they deserve a video of their own. If you are interested on that, please let me know. After polishing everything a little bit more, I send the sketch to my client to see if there's anything to change. Also, if you're working with a client, please always send sketches and like progress pics to see if there's anything to change, if they are happy with how the commission is going. I usually prefer to send like more updates than less, but that's one more of those you need to test and find what works for your things. After the client's approval, I move to the main drawing line art. For both the sketch and line art, I use some custom brushes I made myself, but you can use any brush you like. I really like doing line art, probably because a lot of the hard and difficult decisions of the drawing are already made, so I can just turn off my brain and just chill. Also, I really like to use lines to give more texture to my drawing and that's something I am trying to incorporate more on my art this year, but yeah, line art is good. With the line art done, it is finally time to do the clown colors or color blocking. You have probably seen some artists take the most unhinged colors and use them as base to their drawings. And that's something I find quite useful for me. I pick a color that's very contrasting with the line art and the background, and I use it to separate objects or elements of the drawing. I can't stress enough how useful it is to have everything on its own layer, even though I mostly like to paint on just maybe one layer sometimes. I always have a folder with all of my layers separated, so whenever I need to, you know, isolate a certain area, I don't need to keep selecting and selecting again. Over the years I found out that I don't like using a lot of hard shadows and rendering in my work. I just like to use color modes and custom brushes to add some color variation and texture. And I am still finding my style and what I really like on art. Now that the piece is mostly rendered, I start to work on the background. I always start my drawing with the little paper texture behind it because I just don't really like drawing on a full white canvas. My eyes just don't like white mode. For this commission, I wanted to make a background that fits my client's aesthetic, but I didn't start the piece with the purple background because color is relative to context. And if you have a very colorful background from the beginning, the final colors might not work well with other backgrounds. That's why I always recommend you use a more neutral background, like white or gray, or something like mine, which has a warm color, but I want my drawing to have a more warm and traditional feeling, kinda like if I was painting on old paper, so it's really not a problem. And that's also why I did more than one final version of this reference sheet. I made one with a very cute purple background for a presentation, one with my classic paper texture behind it, and one with a 50% grey, just so that any other artist who will use this reference sheet to draw something, they won't hate me. <laughs> After that, I did some more polishing on everything, added some textures and some more details and stuff, and after almost 15 hours of work, what about we take a look at the final results? Reference sheets can be quite intimidating, but once you start to understand how to make them, it is a fun, really fun project to work on. And I am really liking to share more of my process here on YouTube, and I really hope you're liking it too. 
Thank you, Angra, for commissioning me and letting me use your reference sheet on this video. I loved working on your character and I can't wait to work on the actual VTuber model. I think that's everything for today, little inklings. I hope you liked this video and I hope to see you in another adventure. Bye!